wonder why it seems like someone you know is with the wrong person? Well, they probably are. Could be. A new study shows that many of us settle for less when it comes to love simply because we're scared of being alone. Researchers found the stigma of being single is so powerful that many adults opt instead for a substandard relationship or they decide to stick with someone that's breaking them down. The relationship mm. is breaking up. Well, rather than be on their own. Join us now. Yeah, join us now to talk about it. Relationship coach Rick Brown is with us this morning. Good to see you. Always great to have you Thank in you. here. Good to be back. You know, especially with the holidays, people are so afraid of going through it solo. Why do you think so many people are afraid of being alone? Well, I think if you think about it, most of us, there is a universal craving to be connected. And it's that awareness of being disconnected that gives us that feeling of being alone and in pain. And people really want to feel connected and they will do anything they can just to try and stay connected. But do you think it's a good idea to stay in a relationship that maybe is making you upset, you're depressed, you're unhappy? What's worse, being single or being in an unhappy but, relationship? But see, even single people, for example, it's one thing to say I'm single and that's why I feel alone. What's even more painful is for people who are in relationships, who are couples who actually feel yes. so alone and they have a hard time with that. I've also always heard about the, uh, what is it, the pleasure pain, pleasure pain principle. You're obviously getting something out of the relationship, even though it may not be a good one. Right. So you haven't hit that tipping point to where it's so bad yet right. that you see life being single is better, right? right. Well, most people really want their relationships to work. Uh, and so as frustrated as they may be, they hold out some hope that maybe something can change, maybe somehow it work. What actually is interesting is so many people will stay in something that's less than satisfying until they either find something more satisfying or what they do is they leave the relationship and end up in something very similar to what they left. So what do you suggest to people who are in an unhappy relationship? What do you say to them? Well, first to be able to somehow own that and recognize that you're feeling disconnected and you have to find a way to say that to your partner in a way that's not wounding, not attacking, not blaming. So for example, to say to your partner, you know, I'm just aware that I've been feeling very disconnected lately. I don't know if that's how you're feeling, but I wonder if there's somehow a way we can talk about that. I want to backtrack to something you said a second ago because it really stuck with me. Yeah. Uh, you go from a bad relationship into another bad relationship. Yeah. Why is that? Well, and the reason that happens, it's a fascinating uh, thing, is because we go to that which is familiar, but what we're trying to do is get what we didn't get but we really wanted to get. So for example, if you grew up in a home with an emotionally unavailable parent, naturally you want to be in a relationship where you feel emotionally connected to someone mm -hmm. but what will actually happen is you will find yourself drawn into a relationship with someone who you will discover you also feel emotionally unavailable and disconnected and you'll spend the rest of your relationship trying to get that emotionally unavailable that person that's to be emotionally available. Doing? It's familiar, it's familiar. But we don't do it because we like it, we don't repeat it's it because, because it's we want, it's familiar. And you have to get but you didn't get, but you have to get it from something similar that oh. you didn't get it from. Oh, but, we don't, but, but we don't seem to learn the lessons either. We right. say, wait, I was in a relationship like this before. I wasn't right. getting what I needed. Now I'm going back into something else that's the same. We didn't learn the lesson there, did we? Right. Well, well, yeah, but, it's, but you're going to continue to do that because you want to get that emotionally unavailable person to become emotionally available because if you ever could pull that off then you would have all you ever really wanted and needed. So if you decide to be single how can you overcome that fear though if you're staying in something that's not good we need to move to the next step in our lives and find happiness in some form or another can you do things to overcome that fear of being alone because it's not the worst thing in the world. Well I, I don't I, I, people can make conscious choices to be single, but even people who are single will tell you when the doors close and it's just the four, the four walls on themselves, they really want and yearn to be in a relationship. They yearn to feel connected with somebody. Now they may be afraid of it, like I don't want to get hurt again, but deep inside they yearn to be in relationship and to wow. be connected. Very interesting. This is good. That's why he's yeah. the best of the best right yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. No. And, and you've got to figure that out because uh, you're going to continue to repeat that pattern. Uh, there's no getting, what people do is they get rid of one partner yeah. and think, well, now I found the right partner. So it comes down to finding your right partner, though. Well, it comes down to, to being more conscious of the partner you are with, that you are with somebody who probably is going to 
reenact those feelings of feeling Someone unfamiliar maybe something that maybe is a little uncomfortable at first maybe what's best well you're gonna be drawn to somebody who feels comfortable first and then you're gonna find that you feel very uncomfortable with them so find someone who feels uncomfortable <laughs> it won't work that way you, you won't you won't feel the chemistry you won't feel oh. the chemistry so for example if you grew up with an emotionally unavailable part parent you're gonna say I'm gonna go find somebody who's emotionally available that makes sense and there you're are those people attracted. out that you're not attracted to you don't feel any chemistry you feel the chemistry when you actually find somebody who looks like they might be emotionally available but then what you discover when you stay in a relationship long enough is you begin to experience they're emotionally unavailable yeah. and you're gonna spend the rest of your relationship trying to get that person to be emotionally available well I think we helped some people out that was good stuff Rick yeah. always yeah. great to have you in here again Rick Brown uh, your website people may want to check out rickbrown.org org all right thanks, thanks Rick always in. great to see you man appreciate good it. to be with you Merry Christmas thank Brown. you, we'll you see too you